and we are live on this Wednesday night, the 24th of July in the year of our Lord 2013. The day the new prince got his first name and I'm thanking the Lord Harry, his name's George, because if it had been Prince Albert, I'd have lost the bet. And that's not a good bet to lose. Not in any way, shape or form, I'm here to tell you. Tonight, I'm joined by a very special guest that a lot of people will know of but many people probably won't know what he looks like. And I'll come to him in a second. That's after I introduce the effervescent loveliness and bubblicious babe. That is the one and only Sav. How are you doing, Sav? How's your ears? Because I've heard you've got itchy lug holes. I'm fine as long as I keep my headphones on. <laughs> so when I take them off, the world sounds really funny. Really? Aye. It might just be me, though. It could well be. But let us let us go to the... The, the moodiness that is the big telly tonight. I'm loving it. It's like, is it Mondrian? Or is it Cezanne? No, it's not Cezanne, because he was pointless, wasn't he? It's... One of the, some un unidentified artist. Yes, some unidentified artist in your monitors now. If you didn't know what he looked like, if you remember of ECF, the e-cigarette forum, it's the boss man. This is Smokey Joe, otherwise known as Oliver Kershaw, who I'm here to tell you, is he's a cracking fella he's actually a cracking fella he is met him a couple or three times now over the uh, the current unpleasantness and um yeah he's got an awful lot of good ideas oliver welcome to the show and it's really good of you to come along and uh, and have a natter with us tonight thanks dave it's great to have, great to be here and uh, you know i'm sorry i haven't done it before it's uh, the pressures of life and a young family well, yes, young, young is the operative word here because I, you can't be much more than about 16, can you? How have you got a family already? 17, mate. <laughs> 17, is it? Yeah. So, yeah, wife and how many kids? Uh, the one called Albert, believe it or not. So we've been, we've been absolutely sweating it as well the last few days. It didn't even occur to me, but um, yeah. So I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Thank God it's George, not Albert. Yes, if it had been Prince Albert, I think I'd have been divorced because <laughs> I would definitely, I would definitely have lost the bet without a shadow of a doubt. Um, we probably need to do something about the show, shouldn't we? Really. So yeah. that being the case, I think I shall play the titles in. We've got a tool for everybody that's going to be available to you um, in in the uh, the run up to all kinds of things that are going to be happening, and we're going to. We're going to be talking to chat a lot tonight because we need to know what you want to do. Um, and that's, that's serious. But that's all going to come up after the titles because this is VT Talk. Okay, we are aware that there's a, a funny noise keeps on happening. We're going to try and get it to a minimum. We think we know what it is, and, and during the course of the show, we'll try and sort it out. Um, it's a it's a, a microphone interruption thing, we think, to do with electricity in the atmosphere. Um, talking about an electric atmosphere, uh, did you see last night's show, Ollie, Oliver? I, I've seen the excerpts. I'm, I didn't manage to see the whole show. Well, I, I sat and watched Mark O's show last night, and if you didn't see it, you really ought to get a look at the full thing. Um, this was Mark o Van Basten interviewing um, Linda McCavan, I nearly forgot her name, Linda McCavan, uh, the rapporteur of the, uh, the Tobacco Products Directive that's currently going through the EU. And I was, I have to say, quite struck. I'd expected um, something quite, that's breaking through to me now as well. I don't know where it's coming from. And I do apologise for it. Um, I would quite expected a brash individual and what I saw looked like somebody that was really drained and, and really quite tired. What did you make of it, Sav? Well, sorry, I'm dealing with chat, but yes, I have to agree. Yeah, it, 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 she kind of came across as, as being wrecked and also, it seemed to me, um, she didn't have all of the information that I think she probably needed. I think it's safe to say that because there were one or two bits and bobs of things of which she was not aware. 
Now, what concerns me about that is that if that's the rapporteur, what level of information have the other representatives in both the EU and in Parliament got? And it's kind of worrying. I mean, if, if, you, if you watched the show through last night, she wasn't aware that the MHRA, in the person of Jeremy Mean, had said that everything currently on the market, should things go the wrong way for us, would come off the market. Now, Oliver, you were there when I asked him the question straight off, were you not? And I think you well, can yeah. confirm what his answer was. It, it was that everything would come off the market. Uh, everything currently available today on the market, and absolutely none of it would, uh, would, would satisfy their standards for market author authorisation. Yeah. Can, it was can, unequivocal. Uh, uh, totally, totally unequivocal. That was exactly the way it was. There is nothing on the market today that would gain a marketing authorisation. And he, he wasn't shy about it either, was he? No, no not the slightest. He was, um, I mean, he was completely candid. I mean, um, you know, uh, uh, he was certainly, given our sort of surroundings, uh, feeling the spirit of full disclosure. I mean, it was, yeah, it, it was, um, I was just glad that you asked him. Well, exactly right. I mean, the fact of the matter is that is the case. And yet, judging by her reaction yesterday, Mrs. McCavan is not aware that that is the case. She's just not aware that that is the case. And I also heard her, as she was going through all of this interview, saying that she wanted to see electronic cigarettes thrive, that she believes in them, she thinks that they're a good thing. And I actually see no reason to disbelieve what she said at that point. In fact, I think everything that she said during the course of the interview, she believed, but I think she was working from wrong information. Sav, I'm, I'm seeing your eyes slather about like a good one and I know there's loads of stuff coming through. What's chat saying? Yeah, chat have had uh, quite a lot to say. Um, a lot of people were congratulating Marco for the interview but were very curious as to what she had to say off camera. Mm. Uh, Marco said in her favour she was very nice to me um, even if we don't agree with what she had to say. Very boring uh, wondering if we know what, what her thoughts on BAT as they have the only stuff that's currently under process and Winter Roger said she was uh, a bit fed up about her dismissal of the Lancet article. Well yeah yeah I mean that again I think purely and simply she just had no idea who the people that were involved in that Lancet article actually are and this is I got my thinking hat on uh, this morning well last night and this morning and I thought she needs information, and if she needs information, so does every other MEP. And we've come up with a tool. It's a video. But this is a video that you can download, not from YouTube, although it will go up on YouTube. But it's, excuse me, it's sound check time. Um, it's being hosted by Oliver on ECF. Uh, it's there for download. It's in QuickTime format. It's optimised in both resolutions for iPads, iPhones, and all of the other mobile devices, Android, anything you've got, it'll run on, or, or it should run on. I've tried it on everything I've got, and it does. Um, and it's a video that is designed to be shown to an MP or an MEP in person, that you get in front of their face and show them the video. Now, the Lords are sitting till the 30th, MPs are on holiday now until the 2nd of September, MEPs are on holiday also, uh, I think, till the 9th, actually, although some of them will be back in Europe. But there's nothing to stop you from contacting them and making an appointment to see them at their next available surgery that you can get at. And then you can show them this. And this just might inform them, because what they're going to see is what one politician thinks and then they're going to see what the truth of the matter is have a look at this and we'll see what people think because if it needs tweak and i'll tweak it uh, but have a look at it and we'll see what, where we go from there the mhra uh, jamie mean has said uh, under medicinal regulation none of these things currently available, so nothing on mm. that table um, would qualify for a marketing authorisation. Quality of electronic cigarettes is not good enough to support people.
to reduce the harms of smoking. So that implies that medicinal regulation in Atlant would result in all e-cigs, all of those, um, being taken off the market. The quality of electronic cigarettes is not good enough to support people to reduce the harms of smoking. Um, so nothing would be available to myself or fellow vapors. Mm. Um, how does that stack up? That's not my understanding of what the MHRA has actually said. They are not of a good quality. They are not capable of supporting the public health outcome we want to see. Joan Reins had actually said that. Well, yeah. my, well, that's not what the intention of our lawmaking is at all. My view on e-cigarettes is mm -hmm. that they really help people stop smoking. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of evidence. And I accept that evidence. I accept that if you're a heavy smoker, you're much better to get an e-cigarette, smoke it, and I would be happy to see heavy smokers switch to e-cigarettes and I have no intention whatsoever of trying to get those products off the market. Um, so going back to the MHRA, because mm. you may or may not be aware, um, they've involved, uh, informed current vendors that in order to continue trading if this is enacted, the costs for each e-cig products will carry an amount somewhere around £200,000 or more each. Uh, and one e-cig vendor has currently spent over £2 million and is no closer to achieving an MA than they were before mm. they started. I've seen wildly different figures on the cost of getting a licence to get an e-cigarette on the market. Wildly different ones from different... The companies exaggerate the amount because let's not, the companies aren't charities, you know, they're, they're not, they're fighting the legislation because they don't want to have to pay to have their products regulated. But companies do that all the time. Mm -hmm. You know, banks didn't want to be regulated. Look what happened to banks. You know, sometimes you learn that things are better and they want to reduce their costs. I understand that. But a lot of these cigarette companies are looking at making profit, huge profit margins in future. On the one hand, they're predicting that they're going to overtake cigarettes and they're going to become a big market. On the other hand, they're telling me that they can't afford to do a regulatory process. Can I just show you this that is from The Lancet? Um, this came out this morning, mm -hmm. uh, and it's particularly the last paragraph um, before the, the references. Um, it's the, 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 the paragraph that says, in conclusion. So in conclusion, since e-cigarettes are a recreational consumer product mm -hmm. that are competing with much more dangerous cigarettes, which are not regulated as medicines, mandatory medicinal regulation is not required for public safety and can harm public health by restricting the ability of e-cigarettes to compete with cigarettes in the marketplace. Excessive regulation of e-cigarettes would protect the market monopoly of cigarettes and mm -hmm. have the potential consequences of disease in the death of millions of smokers who were prevented from moving on to the next generation of e-cigarettes. Uh, for the first time in the history of the tobacco control movement, a realistic possibility is emerging that a tobacco problem might get resolved and that this could happen with minimal or no government involvement or expenditure. Regulators of medicine should hold their fire. Mm. What, what do you think about that? Well, I don't know who wrote the, I mean, The Lancet publishes different views, and the medical profession has been divided to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. And some, it's true, I've, you know, I've met some doctors who don't think, not from this country actually, I don't know who these doctors are, not from the UK. In the UK, I did take soundings from people who do believe, like action on smoking and health, they do believe we should have these cigarettes on the market. Mm -hmm. But their top doctors say, because they, you know, they deal with people, they want them to be regulated as medicines. And so, yes, there are some doctors who don't think that, but they're equally in the UK, if you look at the, the bulk of the opinion I've had from the health community and from top doctors, is certainly saying to me, we think to get the quality right, to make sure they do what they say on the tin, because... <laughs> The, vapor, the vaping community, mm. uh, myself included, yeah. are concerned about is that we won't be able to get what we like to use. 
I think, and I've seen a lot of this, and I know people have written to me and are concerned, but there's nothing in what we're doing which should stop that happening. The of electronic cigarettes is not good enough to support people to reduce the harms of smoking. So there you go, that's the tool that I've come up with, that it's something that you can put onto your iPad, uh, there are two versions, there's an HD version and there's a 540 version, uh, you can put it on your iPod, your iPod, your iPhone, any i device will take it, any of the Android devices will take it, a laptop will take it, it's there and you can take that and put it in front of your MP or your MEP, whichever one you can get with or as many as you can get with and because you're there because they see that they'll know who Linda McCavan is they will equate to the the thoughts that she's had because it would seem that our elected representatives have not been properly informed and I think the Anna Subri True. case shows that we'll come to Anna Subri in a little bit Oliver, have you got any thoughts on what you've just seen? Or oh, hang on, actually, what we need to do is take chat first because I know there were some comments. Uh, Sarah? Yeah, there was quite a lot of feedback for the video, which I can pass on yeah, after the show. Okay. But um, we've had comments from Charlie Vapor, who uh, says um, she thinks we can afford billions in meat and medicines regulation, tobacco and pharma, maybe, but not us. Mitch Dog says, I still find it unreal that the people making the decisions are considerably less informed than we are. You should expect that. It's always the case. Yeah. Lamental has said, very good. Would be useful if there was a brief on who these people are at the start of the video and a short sentence on their intentions. Um, Parrot Flock has said, any time a government pushes a piece of legislation through like this, there are always unintended consequences. Take my state of Florida that ended up making smartphones, computers and anything that accesses the internet illegal by trying to fight online gambling. Yes, the, the, there are times where the right hand and the left hand apparently don't even know they're attached to the same body, much less what they're doing. Um, the reason I didn't put a preamble onto the video is because that's your job. What we have discovered, um, and again this comes from various different meetings that I've had and Oliver's had with various different people and Sav was there as well, they are not massively impressed at all by what you might call a, a, a mass mail-in, although there is a, another idea that we want to talk about, postcards, and we'll come to that a little bit later on as well. They're not impressed by the, the cut and paste idea. What they tell us is that they see one, they see the second, that's a coincidence, and then they ignore the rest. So you could have 120,000 all of the same cut and paste thing and they just ignore it. They see it as being an organisational campaign and they'll have, they'll have some sympathy with the organisation but 120,000 doesn't make any difference to them. They know how many members organisations have. The whole idea behind this as a tool is that you can take it and get in your MP's face because, and MP I think is probably the important one at this point in time because of action that we're looking to take a little later down the line. If you can sit in front of your MP and say, look, this is the case, you have not been correctly informed, you need to be talking to the Department of Health and to the MHRA and get the full costs We've shown you that the cost of gaining medicine's licence at the minimum is £350,000. At the maximum, it's two and a quarter million pounds. And that's just the fees that the MHRA itself has identified. And even they're not sure that they've got the top number right. There needs to be more clarity on that one. Um, Oliver, what else would you suggest people did with, with, uh, with a tool like that? I mean, you being much closer to Westminster, you probably have a little bit better angle on what people well, can do. I'm not sure I, I, I do, but, but I, 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 from personal experience, I've, I've written to my, my MPs over the years and I've always 
been sort of astounded about the degree to which MPs do hold it to be very important to actually communicate with their constituency members. So I guess what I'm saying is is don't sort of put it off and say, well, uh, you know, they probably won't listen to me anyway. They, they will. The, the, the point is there is a general sense of apathy in this country politically. And if you are motivated and you can go out and do it and, you know, go, go to your constituency surgery or, or try and arrange a private appointment, um, if, if, you, if you're persistent and you, and you hammer the issue, you, you'll get that meeting. And we everybody to be doing this now. There's just no doubt about it. Um, one other thing that I thought might be useful for people to take along um, would be, and perhaps we could sort this out, Dave, is, is an annotated um, copy of the impact assessment. Because I think, you know, the, the MHRA have spelt it out. They did. What they believe this is going to cost. Um, Absolutely, they did. Yes, they, they, it, I mean, you know, it's, it's there in writing. I mean, it's not as if anybody's making this up. This is it's it's there in writing by the MHRA that um, you know all, the, all of the you know all of this speak of light touch and so on is is completely undermined by the fact that we're talking. Can you remember the figures, Dave? It was up to two and a half million, wasn't it? Uh, uh, two two point two two eight. Okay, two point two two eight million. I mean. Staggering amounts of money per product. I mean, and what this represents is a complete stifling of any innovation. Mm. And I, it's, it's gone. I mean, you know, because every new device that comes in the market um, has to. I, I think most of most of your viewers understand that, but it has to be reiterated. You know, the the products that we expect to have in two years' time. I mean, you know, you, you and I, Dave, have, have been vaping now for five years, nearly six. And we have seen huge changes in that period, massive competition within the market, and we just expect more, mm. and we know it will happen. Um, can we just go back to Linda, just very briefly, because yes. I, I've got a couple of thoughts on, and I absolutely agree with what you were saying. I have no doubt in my mind that she believes what she's saying. I, I don't think she's a dishonest person. I think she's her, the brief is wrong, and I think there's a certain degree of ideology in it as well. So the two specific things in sort of reverse order um, from the video. Firstly, is when she's talking about the companies. I mean, and this was quite clear from the EMBI workshop meeting. She equates the e-cigarette industry at some level to the tobacco industry. Yes. She, she, views, she views them broadly as being the same thing. Yes. She, she has no real understanding of what, what the industry is, where it comes from. She, um, she probably has been informed of, I don't know, to maybe totally wicked turnover um, and assumes that every other company is making the same amount and that it's, you know, this this industry absolutely awash with money. <laughs> she she won't understand the number of people selling devices and she, won't, she certainly won't have any idea of the level of um, innovation that we've been talking about within the industry. Mm. That's, that's kind of the first thing. And I think um, uh, the the second point is is just going back to her um, her, her doctors. You know that this argument from authority that she's using that she's got these this panel of doctors. Well, <clears throat> okay, she does. She has been informed, uh, as we well know. Uh, the, many of the medical organisations in the UK view uh, want e-cigarettes to be uh, uh, medicinalised, and the reason they want that is because they say uh, they want them all to be. Um, um, efficacious. They, they want them to work for everybody. Now, I think you and I and, uh, and vapors that know their stuff probably will have a little bit of sympathy with this view because we know that there's a lot of crap out there. Mm -hmm. we, we, we know that you know a lot of the cigarettes don't work for, for most new vapors. And we know that, that, that vapors go on a sort of trajectory through the sort of vaping career where, where they'll start with something less now than it was perhaps a couple of years ago. But you know, it takes most people a while to get onto even a mid-range device, let alone something, you know, a bit more powerful. Yes. But again, you know, this is going to change. You know, th th this is going to change. Give it a year, um, the, 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 the standard devices will be more like the ego devices. Yes. And the, and the innovation uh, uh, in the market will be uh, fierce. Oh. Uh, it, it will be fierce because once you once you sort of take the um, cigarettes out of the equation, which will happen, um, and you're fighting for the for the the mid-range product that really kicks it out with the refillable liquids, then you're into some really in, that that's when uh, vaping, in my view, will take the next big leap forward. 
Indeed, yeah. yes, indeed. And uh, as per usual, I think one of the reasons that everything is crashing is because we have an electrical storm oh. buzzing overhead. So wireless is going off, everything's going off here. I've just been hearing the first rumbles from a little further away. Uh, so if it all goes to hell in a handcart, you understand why. Um, I agree with everything that you said uh, in, that, in that little section, Oliver. Uh, we do need to take a break. Uh, mm. and when we come back, we need to be talking, I think, about what the plans are for further demonstrations and group action, if you like. And we'll fill you in on that when we've taken these words from our sponsors, none of whom sell crap. in Yorkshire for your basic needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-Alexa.co.uk. iVeber and iVeber-Alexa.co.uk are proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv. And we are back in the room here on VT Talk on Wednesday, 24th of July, with myself, David Dawn, the everlasting, beautilicious babe, that is Sam, and Oliver Kershaw, Smokey Joe from the ECF in the big monitor. Now, there's been a lot of people asking what we're going to do next after the, uh, the black balloons in Brussels. What are we going to do? And we need to be doing something. And we know that the, uh, the German organisations have two demonstrations organised on the 31st of August in both Dusseldorf and Berlin. And we understand that the French are doing something similar in Strasbourg. And Italy currently has five vendors on hunger strike in front of the Italian parliament. Um, so it's, there's kind of there's action going on all over Europe. However, um, I've put together... Under the umbrella of ECHA, um, with John Spring and uh, Cerulean C. Lorian, um, a bit of a, what would you call it, Oliver, a committee or? Yeah, it seems to be, yeah, I, like a standing committee almost. A, a war cabinet. Steering, yeah, a war cabinet. A war just... cabinet. We've put a war Sorry. cabinet together, but we need more people. Yeah. Um, we need folks that have got the, uh, the get up and go to actually contribute to the, 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 the whole notion of the action that we're taking. Now, at the moment, there's, there's a few people on there, uh, including Paddy Costall, who is, uh, is Jerry Stimson's right-hand man. Um, well, he's not right-hand man, they're equals. They are, they are equals, and both Sav and I know Paddy reasonably well. And, and trust me, he's a bloke you want on your side, rather than a guinea. That is for absolutely certain. And he knows what he's talking about. Um, Oliver's sitting there, as I say, John Springs there from Ecker, Cerulean C is there from Ecker, Sav, Kat are on there. Um, and what we're trying to do is to get everybody together to formulate the next action. And what we've been tossing about is what we should be doing. And obviously we need to be doing something. But 
as Sav has informed me, um, and she's just checked it, the EDL, it, well, is that the English Defence League, is it? It is English Defence League, yeah. Yes, the EDL, English Defence League, on the 31st of August, is having some kind of shindig in London. And what that basically means is, whether Parliament was sitting or not, the, the uh, Metropolitan Police are most unlikely to uh, give the go-ahead for anything else to happen, because if Birmingham last weekend was anything to go by, they were drafting in police from all over the country to try and contain what they thought was going to happen, and therefore the likelihood is we wouldn't be able to do anything anyway. But what's been suggested in this war cabinet it's war cabinet because it's nobody else's. If you're a Geordie, you'll understand what I'm saying. If you're not, I'm sorry. Um, you laugh from south. Sorry, it took me a while to get that. Yes. Oh, sorry. Levity is probably not good. Um, we've come to the conclusion that there, well, we know that there is going to be a debate triggered by the scrutiny committee um, because you may have noticed if you follow Twitter, and if you're not on Twitter, like I keep on saying you should be, because everything happens there first. The Times has picked up the Anna Soubry story, and they really weren't very complimentary. You saw it, I believe, Oliver, didn't you? Oh, I did, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's, um, it's a great little piece, um, and it's, it, it's going to have traction. Um, it, it, it's a little bit light on um, picking up you know the detail but that's that's just the nature of the particular column that it's in but it's yeah unkind unkind not nice it's yeah it, it's setting it out pretty clearly it's only yeah as you said earlier Dave it's only taking them a week but it's out there now and that's fantastic for us well it is because with it with it being the times um every other newspaper worldwide reads the times and anything that they lead on anything that they cover all of the other newspapers go, hang on a minute, what's this? We didn't know about that. Or did we? Did we? Uh, well, if we didn't, we should. Uh, you, 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 get on it. Let's, we need to follow this up. We need to go further than the Times. That, that level of competition happens in the press. And that's, that is absolutely worldwide. So they've picked up on that. So we know that this debate is going to happen in the, houses of, uh, the House of Commons, if not in the Lords as well. Uh, and I, I know it's not happening before um, before the 31st of, of uh, July in the Lords, even though they're sitting, well, before the 30th, they're sitting till then. Um, but this will happen, and it seems to me that it's a good idea that we organise a protest of some sort yes. as close to Parliament as possible. And I think you said Parliament Square was a good place, didn't you, Oliver? To be honest, um, it, I mean that, that that is as close, but I I still haven't worked out um, whether or not it's legal to do it anymore. Uh, I think it might have been repealed the ban on protest there, but I'm not sure. I think it. I, I certainly remember the the Tories were talking about it a couple of years back, so it may well have been repealed the ban on protest in Parliament Square. But I, that that is probably the place to do it because it is you know a direct plea on on, on a specific issue to members of the Parliament. Absolutely, absolutely. The, the aim of this is, is to, to make it coincide with the day that the debate happens. Now, we're talking about UK here, because if, again, if you watched Mark O'Shaw last night, you will have heard Linda McCavan going through the steps that need to be taken before this all becomes law. And there has to be agreement, not just broad agreement, but detailed agreement between the Parliament on one side and the Council of Ministers on the other. And because the, the Subri affair, Subrigate, I were calling it? Subrigate. Subrigate. Lovely. That, that sounds like an understudy in a play. <laughs> um, because of Subrigate, this is going to attract the eyes of the press around the world. So they are going to have to get it right. And they are going to have to say, to the council of ministers well actually can you just hang fire for five minutes while we get this sorted out so if we arrange this protest this demonstration this event to take place on the same day as that debate the press are going to be in attendance anyway 
we can use the green the green card scheme that we discussed last week where you fill a little green card in and they go and get your your MP and they can come out but what we can also do ahead of time with the tooling that we were talking about earlier go and see MPs and at the risk of being a little bit cynical they're they do like being on the telly don't they I think they all like being on the telly and if they think they can get out onto Parliament Square and be given a microphone and a bit of a spotlight and I don't know a, a, an evict to hold or something like that and it's going to get them on the telly they'll be there so they could be shuttling in and out of the debate and the whole idea of your local MP wandering back in to the debate and then being called to speak and him saying I've just been outside on Parliament Square speaking to my constituent Fred McCauley and Fred's been telling me that blah 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 whatever it is Fred's been telling him and that is so immediate that is so effective that is so powerful that all of these MPs are going to be in a position to know we're down there and we're listening and we're looking and we're watching so that's kind of where we're at at the minute and what what I need from you, the viewers, is to know what you think. So, Sav, I'm going to throw it to you because I've got the idea that they've been clattering away like goodens. I've got loads and loads and loads and loads from chat. Um, Funny Trickster's just typed in. He says, is it worth us all meeting our local vendors to organise a group to go down to Westminster to make a huge protest? Yes. Hang on, I've just got to grab that before it disappears off the screen. Um... Right, I'll go back to me top. Asteroid Surf be damned. Yes, sod it. If, if they think we're that good, let's be that good. Yeah. Um, I'll save that one for later. Charlie Vape S says, we need Vince Cable to look at the impact statement that you were talking about earlier on. Send him in. Liana... Sorry, Liana Lawless has asked, um, she asked this last week, um, what do you do if your MP doesn't have a surgery and you've been trying to get a meeting for months? They have. They, I think they have to have. Am I right? I'm not sure, mate. I, 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 I know her MP is one of the prominent um, MPs, so it's hard to, to get hold of. Ah, right, yes. Just keep phoning the constituency office. Well, that yeah. might be or there's that the might green be card thing. thing. Yeah. That might well be. Green card, yes. Good idea. Go on, Sav. You've still got, um, the, you've got the field. I'm leaving you full screen till you're finished. Excellent. Rob's has made a, a point that we haven't heard before, and he says he's not heard anybody talking about the litter benefits of vaping. There's no ash, there's no cigarette butts thrown away, there's no pollution to the water table from the tar, etc. This is worth making public as an advantage over cigarettes. I would agree to a large degree, yes. Uh, Lamental again has said... It's safe to assume, regarding Linda McCavan, she has her agenda and will negate any evidence to support any opposing theories. This was shown in the, ma in the manner she dismissed the Lancet article. Gillis said she has been notified of, of other doctors' and professors' opinions, and I don't doubt she has never been asked to view Clivebates.com. I have asked her, in brackets. Mm. If she was professional, she would have looked at the other information and could not possibly doubt her own doctor's opinion. There is some denial there for sure. Mm -hmm. And I'm getting fed stuff from Kat. Gillis has said, Sav, can you ask Dave why he thinks the Anna Subri instance seems to have been hushed? I thought it would have made big headlines with the recent Cameron Friends issue, but seems to have not been mentioned. Can I take that? You can. Okay, it'll give you a rest and you can have Thank a... You. A little drinky off camera. Excellent. But we can still see you. So you know, your mum will kick you. <laughs> I know. I'll tell you why. I think that the uh, the British press particularly has been a little bit on tenterhooks for um, the Prince, not Albert, but George, um, and has been concentrating on bashing Dave, frankly. I think it's been a, a Dave bashing fest. Um and I, I, for the life of me, I, I, I don't understand why. And this is coming from a, a one-time commissioning editor. Um, but it's been hot news. They've gone with that. They've ignored the Subri thing uh, because it kind of makes it look as though all of this so-called influence from Crosby actually wasn't. And it detracts from the Crosby story, if you think about it, when mm. Subri's gone ahead to try and pave the way for playing packaging 
obviously you would think with Dave's knowledge, but not necessarily, certainly not with the scrutiny committee's knowledge, that does get in the way of this whole Crosby told Dave not to do it when one of his ministers is going across there doing our best to pave the way for to do it. So it kind of gets in the way of that. But as the, as the, the, uh, the Crosby thing and, 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 and the Dave bashing has receded a little bit, the Times has picked the story up and gone, oh, just a minute, that's not right. I think, I think that's what it's all about. And that's... Can I just add one, one little thing? Yeah, yeah. I think it's bloody complicated as well. It, or at least, and I'm sure you appreciate this, you know, from your, from your journalism, um, you know, it, it, it's, it's kind of hard to pick out an angle to that story uh, without having to sort of explain the way that, uh, you know, uh, committee overrides work and the rest of it. Yes. It's not a story that kind of leaps out on the page as, as this is a big deal. I mean, the angle is actually pretty straightforward in the end. It's basically, minister goes to Europe, negotiates stuff um, on behalf of uh, the UK that she's not allowed to because she's supposed to come back and report on it. That's the angle, but how do you how do you kind of pull that out and make it a big story? Um, yeah, yeah, it's 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 you know it's it's very much uh, how do you get a headline like man eats horse out of Ms. Subri going going across there? You've got to explain how the whole thing works. The Times has started that, and that makes it much easier for other newspapers to pick the uh, the headlines out. You know, renegade minister sells UK out. That's actually a pretty good one. Nice one. I like that. Well, I can tell you're a pro. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I, could, I could get a job on the current bun the way things are going. Yeah, you know, a renegade minister sells UK out. Um, I don't know. Junior minister sells UK down the river. That kind of thing. Um, that, that, that's what's going to happen. And the more sensationalist tabloids will pick it up in, in that respect. The Tory graph, I don't quite know what they'll do, but I suspect that the left-wing papers will have a failed day because that's a vote winner for the left, isn't it? When you think about it, all of that kind of thing. He said, losing audio on everything else. Um, anything there, Sal? Anything more? Yes, we've got more from chat. Chat are very, very talkative tonight. Good, good. Um, Mark Shaw has said, Linda McCavan is claiming ignorance, and I'm sorry it doesn't wash with me. If she is ignorant to the facts, then it's willful ignorance. She has had every opportunity to be informed via the correspondence as Vape as a loan have sent her, not to mention correspondence from the likes of Clive Bates and Jerry Stimson. Linda McCavan chooses to take her information from somewhere and chooses to ignore information to the contrary. She literally sneered at the Lancet article. I find it very difficult to disagree with that, but I'm going to try and do the devil's advocate thing here. And having watched Anna Soubry in the committee, when Black had the opportunity to correct Soubry about e-cigarettes having dropped out of the tobacco products directive, and he knew they hadn't, and more to the point, sat behind her and three chairs to the right was Deborah Arnott from Ash, and she knew and they were passing notes around the place like kids in a flaming classroom, neither of them corrected the minister. Now, that tells you something. That tells you, I mean, this little, last week somebody said, who's running the country while the politicians are on holiday? It's obvious who's doing it, and it's obvious who's misinforming them. And I've got to say it's the civil servant, and it's the commission in Brussels. Now, all of these... Uh, elected representatives are briefed at some length by their officials and to a large degree they've kind of got to take what their officials say on the face of it and you've also got to remember that all of them have aides in their offices I don't mean HIV I mean they've got people helping them out and they are filtering stuff through as well so you just don't know what's got there that's the devil's advocate side of it mm. it could be right it could be wrong. Before we go any further into it, though, I've just spied. We need to run into the second lot of adverts. We'll be back in two minutes when Sav's had a chance to catch our breath. I've had a chance to wet me whistle. And Oliver's had a chance to let us know whether Prince Albert, sorry, George, is running around the palace green even as we speak. We'll be back in two minutes.
and we're back in the room here on Wednesday 24th of July it's VT Talk with myself Dave Dawn, Sav and in the big mon monitor Oliver Kershaw, Smokey Joe from ECF. Sav you said chat was absolutely overflowing so I'm going to throw it straight back to you. Yes, um, Charlie Vapers has said, we need to wake the sleeping giant. The media can be slow on the uptake. It takes time for things to bounce around the echo chamber, but we're gaining traction. Wishanda has said, when I go to my local e reseller, the corner shop, um, I always eye up the stock and they're selling a lot of the cartos every day. Should we not be educating them and the people they are selling to? Mm. The fact of the matter is, people are using e-cigs, and I think um, I've got it. I'm gonna I'm gonna go on full screen. In fact, I'm gonna go close up. You come on me on this one. Here's the thing: e-cigs are e-cigs are e-cigs, and I know questions being brought up because Sav said a lot of people are asking, "Is it time that we stop calling them e-cigs?" I think at the moment it doesn't make any difference what we call them. The world and his wife and the papers, the press and everybody else knows them as electronic cigarettes, e-cigs, some of them will call them PVs. That's what we know them as. That's what they know them as. That's what the world knows them as. That's basically what we've got to fight with. One of the other things I have noticed though when I've been talking to various different MEPs, MPs and, and Lord knows who's, who else, they are doing their best. The antis are doing their best to force splits in the community and regardless of what you think of a lights tw sky sig uh, anybody safer sigs any anybody regardless of what you think of them that's all got to just go away we've just got to ignore all of that and and heal absolutely everything we cannot afford to be anything other than united seriously we just cannot afford to be anything other than united not just in the uk not just in europe but worldwide no matter what you think of anything that's going on that's the, I'm, I'm afraid that's the way it's got to be i don't think we've got any option uh, of changing that at all sav i'm going to throw it to you not that i can hear you at the minute and let's see what else is coming through oh, i've got you You've got me back, yeah. good. Craig Boots has said, Linda McCavan is taking her info from the papers published via the MHRA's website. Yes. It lists the consultation groups and their views. And I have to apologise in advance for the next two. Like in View, Fury has said, love the enthusiasm. Dave Dawn's army organised in protests against the Death Eaters, to which old Git replied, Professor D Professor Dumbledore's army. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Listen, let me let me say straight away, this has got nothing to do with Professor Dumbledore. It's not my army. It's your army. It's your fight. It's all of us. We are one. We are one. I, I mean, I'm absolutely thrilled at the calibre of people that are coming together in this war cabinet. I like the sound of that. I'm, I'm really thrilled at the cal calibre of people that are coming there and we need help. So if you're up for it, tweet me up, Skype me up, let me know and I'll add you into the, the talk. Keep an eye on the ECHA pages because they'll be publishing what kind of decisions get made and keep everybody informed. Tune in on Twitter. It's all going to be there. We might even, I might even get somebody to set up a, a new um, Twitter handle. We'll call it the War Cabinet. Somebody can set that up. We'll call it the War Cabinet. So the War Cabinet will be tweeting. Um, and we'll, we'll get that set up over the next couple of days. It, it's, it, 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 yes. I mean, uh, thank you. And, and I, I, do, I do thank you. I, I do. I really do. But really, it's, it's, you are the important people. You are the ones that can win the fight. It's not me. It's not me. Sav, more? Yeah, Parrot Flock has just said regarding the e-cig name, we are stuck with the e-cig title no matter what we do. It's like any name. Once it has been the accepted name, there isn't anything that can be done to alter it. Well, yes. I mean, there is another name for a Prince Albert, but we're not going there. <laughs> yeah, um... Sorry, I'm just losing myself. Eagle Maniac has said, I noticed that many threads in the forums are based on questions or assertions that sound like they are posted by ants trying to elicit responses calculated to divide and damage the vaping community. Ah, uh, yes, I have. Um, again, I'm going to 
I've, I've seen that. I have seen that. Um, seriously, honestly, truly. We've been, we've been accused of being AstroTurf. We know we're not. We know that what we are is organised. We know that what we do is communicate, whether we communicate on forums, via Twitter, via Vape TV, via VP Live, via, via all of the various different networks that are there. We communicate, we pass information around. That's the nature of the internet. That's the nature of communications these days. What we do need to be wary of though, is that you don't know who the other person is. That sweet 25 year old blonde with the hourglass figure and looking absolutely gorgeous, could be a six foot 10 lorry driver from Birmingham that's rapidly against e for whatever reason. We do need to be careful about how we respond to uh, what is effectively trolling. Um, and that's something you probably know more about than uh, than I do, Oliver. Well, yeah, I mean, I, I know that we, we we attract a fair few kind of um, um, nutters. Yeah, I mean, trolls. I mean, that's what they are ultimately. You know, catch-all sort of internet term. And I'm never quite sure where they come from, who they are. You know, and and there's all sorts of other weird stuff that that we see. You know, particularly on the back end with respect to data scraping and and the rest of it. <clears throat> some very some very strange stuff going on, but but you know this is kind of all to be expected, really. Um, it's you know I wouldn't let I wouldn't get paranoid about it. Particularly, I, I, I've I've got to be honest and say I, I go quite the other way, um, yeah. because if if they're going to those lengths, they've got to be worried. Mm. It's that simple. I mean, all of the. Uh, the stuff about astroturfing, all of the, the trolls that get around the various different forums and stuff like that. I take that as an amazing compliment to what you out there have been doing. And it is because it shows that you know your stuff and you're willing to act because of the passion that you feel. And that, to me, is the best endorsement of what we're doing that you can possibly have. We do have the antis worried. Bear in mind what we said the other day. On December the 19th, there was one supporter for our cause in the Envy Committee. On the 10th of July, there were 25. That's good growth. That's amazing growth. And you did that. You did that. Everybody watching this show did that. And you owe yourselves a big pat on the back. That's how good you are. And we can do more. We can do even better. That... That video, it's not meant to look as though it's come out of BBC or Channel 4 or ITV or anything like that. It's, it's done by non-professionals. That's the whole idea. And you can take it there and say, yeah, it might be fuzzy, it might be grainy, it might be this. But this is what it means. And the passion that you have when you talk to your MP is going to make such a difference. It's going to make them understand where you're coming from. It's going to make them believe in you and what you're saying and that's the best thing you can possibly do and i'm sorry i shouldn't do that Sav, back to you <laughs> sorry go for it um it's been a lot of chat in chat funnily enough oh. about <laughs> this one is out this isn't it just <laughs> yeah about cigar lakes and not to knock people that are using them to which um, Adam Auger has said it's important to remember of the often quoted 1.3 million e-cig users in the UK the majority will be using cigar lakes mod users at this time are of the minority mm -hmm. and Gillis has said I started on Nicolates they worked for me and I would go back to them before going back to normal cigarettes mm -hmm. And Mark Shaw has said, Dave's right, everyone is a general in this. Making someone a leader is keeping unfair pressure on their shoulders. It's up to every last single one of us. And he's, yes, absolutely. Um, I, you know, everybody's got the capability of doing this. And it just depends on how much passion that you've got. If you want to get involved, get involved. If you can't, nobody's going to think the worse of you. Seriously, they're not. Um... As you know, I'm, I'm away for most of August, and that's, that's why I've kind of brought this team of people together. I trust every last one of them with my last breath. I do. I think we've got some really good people on board. We need more. 
specifically, Ollie, can you kind of flesh out um, what what kind of people do we need? What are we looking for? What do we need people to do? What are the jobs that we might have for them? Just on what we've been discussing the last day or two. Yeah, well, so we we need people, obviously, as we've been talking about, going and, and speaking to their MPs, getting in front of them and, and talking to them. But we, we do also need to think a little bit more about um, about using the technology, about coordinating things, perhaps a little bit, you know, trying to keep tabs on, on making sure that everybody has been contacted. Yes, so, so, you know, if, if anybody's got the, the, the time and inclination and ability to set something up in that respect, so that, so that we can have a list of, say, M MPs' names and check them off when people say they've been to see such and such, they can say, yep, that one's covered. Mm -hmm. Not that it's covered, but, you know, it's got a tick. We know that somebody's seen them. Um, yes. You know, I, I think things like that would be very useful. Um, MEPs as well, uh, and try and try, we must try and, uh, uh, and coordinate more tightly with our European colleagues because, uh, you know, okay, so, so, so there's a little bit of an un unstoppable force from, from the sort of mem members of the European Parliament at the moment, but that, that's not, it's not actually unstoppable. We, we, we can change the nature of the debate, but again, that does require getting in front of MEPs, getting the message out to all of them. Um, you know, in a pan-European fashion. And the last point is back to the Subri affair. You know, things like this are really, really, really key. Um, if anybody knows journalists, has had correspondence with journalists in the past, write an email to them, you know, or call them up, say, look, this is something that I'd like you to either deal with yourself or pass up on to your political correspondent, you know. We, we, we all have these links. We all know people that work in the, in, you know, couple of people removed it's worth doing you know raising this as an issue get getting people talking about it absolutely right absolutely right um and i've noticed we are really really close to end of time sav as per usual i'm going to give it across to you to come out with uh, with chat chat always gets the last word oliver because yeah. they're the important people yeah, uh, chat have been absolutely brilliant tonight, but the last word's going to go to Jeff Bedney in tonight. Uh, Jeff says, oh, if we're in the minority, can we please claim discrimination against all this? <laughs> that's, uh, you know, you can always leave it to Jeff to yeah. come up with the bon mot. That's French, you know, for good word. Did you know that? <laughs> so that's what it is. Um, it's been a, pre a pleasure and a privilege to share the last hour. Yeah with everybody that's watching with yourself oliver and with you sav and thanks as well to cat who's been i know clattering away behind the scenes and feeding sav with information yeah. and, and and dealing with chat I, I want to say a big big thank you to everybody that watches what we do and everybody that comes along to watch vt talk without you it would be well it'd be pointless wouldn't it um and i've said it before and i'll say it again we do have the best chat on the planet bar none so thank you for being you thank you for sticking with us keith daz and i will see you tomorrow uh, but until then don't let the lightning get you in the bum vape on vape hard and don't let the bastards grind you down see you tomorrow <laughs>